In this video, I'm going to review the installation of Alacrity and Tmux so you can upgrade your terminal for using this configuration of NeoVim for writing LaTeX documents. So you can see over here, this is the stock terminal um, running the configuration of NeoVim, and it doesn't look that great. So by comparison, this is what Alacrity will reproduce. And I'm sure you can make the stock terminal look better, but you notice it has this bar up here, which I don't really need that bar. Um, yeah, it's, it's not the best. Um, and it's very easy to install and set up Alacrity with Tmux so that you can have different sessions for different projects all open at the same time in the same window. All right, so you can see here on my GitHub repository that I have folders for both Tmux and um, Alacrity. And so if we scroll down in the installation instructions to Alacrity and Tmux, I do say this is optional, but you can see how much time it takes. It's only about one page, so pretty easy. And you're gonna start by just running these commands uh, to install both Alacrity and Tmux. And then the key piece is to uh, copy the config file for Tmux that I've included to the correct place. So let's get rid of this terminal for the time being. And I'm gonna, you can see I have one window open here for NeoVim. I'm gonna open up a new window so now I have a second window here, so another terminal. Um, and let's go check out, uh, let's list everything dash A. So you can see I have this .tmux config file, which is already in the right place. And so all this copy command will do is it's gonna move it from the config, which you're gonna pull down uh, into your home folder. And that will tell Tmux how to behave. Okay, so you may need to make a change to that file, this tmux.config file. But before doing so, um, we're going to check where fish is ins installed. So we're going to do which fish. And this will tell me its location. Okay. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to edit um, Alacrity. And this is another um, file included in the config. So let's do that. So nvim, which I'm just gonna cut and paste this. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this path, user bin fish. So I'm gonna search for fish And there it is. Okay, and so you can see I've already replaced that path um, with the location that I found for fish. So I've added this local um, because that's where it's, it's shown on my machine. And that's the only thing you need to do. Um, another nice thing that you may want to consider doing, um, it's in the window. So window position. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can configure here, including opacity and yeah, all kinds of stuff. Um, so the font size, you can set what the default is. Um, you can of course change the font size um, using usually control plus and minus, um, but it's nice to just start with the font size that you're gonna use and then this is also nice. So this is um, the dimensions of the window when it opens. And then you'll be able to change these dimensions uh, on your machine, but it's nice to have it just set to the right size. And then the starting position. Um, and so, yeah, if you want, you can set this all up so that it fills exactly the right amount of screen that you want to use. And that's great. When you open up Alacrity, it will just be ready to go in the right spot. You don't have to resize the window every time. 
and you can look through what else you can do in here. There's a lot of other options. Um, you can change the font if you like. Um, you can change the colors, but hopefully this looks pretty good and it's a, it's a good place to start. Okay, so that's uh, all you have to do for Alacrity is just make sure that it knows where fish is. Um, so let's quit out of here. Um, and then it's worth, you know, once you've set this up the first time, uh, running tmux kill server, this will just kind of reset everything. Um, and you want to then open up Alacrity and make sure that fish auto starts. And that is it. It's pretty easy. Um, if you want to see what some of the commands are, I've, you know, that, that run tmux. So like, um, I have it set up to control space, um, triggers tmux, and then you can do different commands. So control space C will create a further window. Control space K kills that window. Control space N goes to the next window, um, and so on. So you can see what those are in the cheat sheet. I've included some, some basic ones, um, or you can look into tmux and its documentation to see what the options are. Um, it may be worth just going and um, editing that tmux file. So let's do .tmux. Okay, so this is where you might, if you don't like control space, uh, you might set a different prefix. Um, you can see which ones I have set. So I just have K kills window. Um, there's a lot of other things it can do, which I don't make use of. Um, but this is not a huge file. Um, so if you wanna make changes to tmux, you know, it doesn't take too much work to do so. You can turn things on um, that you like. But for me, I don't need too much out of tmux. I just need the very basic features that I've included here and uh, the key bindings that I've indicated on the cheat sheet. All right, so let's quit out of here. So that's it. If you don't want to change uh, the way I have it set up, then this is not much work at all. If you do want to mess around with it a little bit, it might take you a little more time, but it's not too hard. Um, there's lots of good documentation for both of these. And that's it. Now you have a, a nice looking terminal, runs really fast. Uh, there's no bar up at the top. And you have, yeah, multiple windows. So you can open up um, different sessions for different for different um, projects that you're working on and easily switch between them. All right, hope that helps.